Okay, so going to the Strong's, number 10. As you can see, all the different scriptures that go back to that number 10. You're going to see a lot of uh, 3 score and 10. That's 70. That's 3 score is 60 plus 10, just to point 1 out. And going to the next page, it's on both sides. And I'm just going to push this up. So you can see it, but I mean, I think we can tell just by how many times it's in here, how important this number 10 is in our Father's Word. This way you can kind of get an idea if you want to go take a, uh, some time and go back and research it, you can. But there's a lot regarding this number 10. It's 10 days or 10 cubits, 10 bases. Ten thousands. There's a lot of it in this, with this word, this number. Even in the New Testament, we're seeing them right coming through here. About that number ten. Got the ten virgin or the ten talents. Uh, a woman having ten pieces of silver, where they're not ten cleansed. This is our Lord speaking. And about the 10 pounds and 10 cities and then it's right here in the upper left hand corner talking about those the 10 pounds and then we're in the horsemen three score and 10 that's 70 then we also see it in the book of Jude it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 then this talks about you shall have tribulation for 10 days in Revelation 2 verse 10. There's that ordinal perfection again, that number 10. This is talking about the overcomers, those who overcome. This is the message to the churches. Those who overcome the mark of the beast and are not deceived by that false Christ. And then... We can see more in 10,000 in Revelation 5. Thousand times 10,000. And then here we go to the 10 horns and 7 crowns upon his head. All right, we're talking about that beast, uh, political, it's Satan the Antichrist being cast out in Revelation 12. And those horns represent nations, powers. Ten horns represent power. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And then having seven heads and ten horns in Revelation 17, 8. This explains it. If you want to know what all this means up in here in Revelation, go to Revelation 17. It will explain it to you, what it means. Because it says the ten horns were south size. It's ultimately going to be those ten fallen angels that come with Satan they're gonna have power for one hour with the beast and we'll just pop over to Revelation 17 12 and the ten horns with thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but received power as kings one hour with the beast that's that one world beast system under Satan the Antichrist and it states right here, and they'll have one mind and give their power and strength unto the beast. And you can see the on the side task over here, it goes back to Daniel 7, about them ten horns. And then it's in Zechariah 1, 18. Talking about them four horns of power, that's those four hidden dynasties, which is education, political financial and religion those four horns of power that hidden dynasty that satan controls and i just wanted to point out also president trump declared that jerusalem was the capital of the nation state of israel going to move the u.s embassy there well i saw in a headline recently that there's quote ten nations that are looking to stand with this decision and are also thinking about moving their embassy to Jerusalem. Ten, mind you. 
I, I find that of high interest. I'm just saying let's be watchful and keep an eye out for these kind of events that are taking place. It's just a heads up, you know, to see what unfolds in these end times, you know, so we're not confused or deceived. And right here, talking about the hate the whore, that's that, going back up here, this mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So what does that mean? In my opinion, it's talking about religion. Just flat and simple religion. Doesn't matter what you go by. I mean, it's it, the hates the whore. It's all these traditions and false religions of men. That's what I see. And the reason we're going to see the reason it's like this hate is because Satan's coming, claiming to be Christ God, and you can imagine what all he'll be saying. Uh, that we all, the whole world has it all wrong. All the religions are wrong. He's the, he's the truth, see? That's what I'm saying. He's going to claim that he has the truth and that he's going to straighten it all out. That's, that's what I see. Talking about making her desolate. All the different religions are going to make them naked. So, anyhow, that's, that's what I see. Just like... The king of Babylon, when he entered into Jerusalem and destroyed the Temple Mount and the host city and burned all the houses and all that, we're looking at a spiritual burning. When people fall away and if they believe and take that mark of the beast and believe that Satan, the Antichrist, is really Jesus or their Messiah that they've been waiting on, their, their prophet, whatever uh, name you want to give him, that's where the desolation's going to come in. That's uh, he's the angel of desolation. That's Satan the Antichrist. This is Satan the Antichrist is the desolator. We see it right here. It says to lay waste, literally or figuratively, bring to make or desolate or desolation come to naught. He is that abomination of desolation. And here in twenty. 48 in the Greek, lonesome that is by implication, waste. This is a desert or desolate or solitary or wilderness. And here on the side task is talking about the popery and the ruin of Rome itself. Well, possibly, but it's not. Uh, when you're looking at the feminine in reference to religion, it's all religions. It's not just one. It's going to be them all because he's going to be all. That's what the message of this Antichrist is. He's claiming to be Christ and God. So it's his religion. His mark of the beast is in your forehead. It's what you believe. Okay, sorry, I'm not trying to get off track here. But this 10, it's right here with these horns. Horns of power. His heads. Okay, so let's pop back to that other screen, that number 10, the 10 horns. This is where we were at and where we were reading from. Now let's go look at 10th. Okay, so starting up here in the left-hand upper corner, we can see the 10th all the way down. T-E-N-T-H. And I'm going to zoom in, so we're going to lose part of this, but that way we can get a better look at it. Okay, so right up here at the top, I've gone in and I've marked a few of them that uh, go back to the month, the tenth month. It says, continually until the tenth month is found in Genesis 8, verse 5. It says, in the tenth month on the first day. We'll just look at Genesis 8. This is, our Heavenly Father gives us these things for examples and we know that the flood of the end times is not a flood of water. It's a flood of lies. And it comes from the mouth of the Antichrist, Satan the devil, along with his fallen angels, as we learn in Revelation 12. But we also have the, the flood of lies and the deception and the confusion of Babylon, Babylon meaning confusion, going on in the world right now. So, understanding some of this is really important. 
So in thinking about how this all ties in together, in verse 1 it says, this is about the, the flood of Noah's time, when a heavenly father destroyed the earth with a flood of water. And Noah, his family, and two of every flesh, male and female, entered into the ark. They were preserved on the ark. And those that were taken in the flood were taken and destroyed in the flood of water. So we're looking at a flood of lies, taken and destroyed in the flood of lies. Other than those that were on the ark. And this word, uh, assuaged, I guess is how you pronounce it, is an interesting word. It says to weave, that is lay a trap or figuratively through the idea of secreting to LA or passions, physically abate a flood, appease, make to cease, pacify or set. And we can look in the side cast, don't overlook these scriptures too, because we've, there's references in Revelation 16, as well as Revelation 18, when God remembered the inequities. Okay. Verse 2, the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. Verse 3, the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. 150 days, that's five months. You can go to Revelation, and I'm not sure why it's not showing it here. Revelation 9 two places that the time was shortened to five months something to think about right there verse 4 the ark rested in the seventh month that's athenium or tishery on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ariat I don't know they're going to say it's in Armenia I'm thinking it's Mount Moriah I'm not sure why it's set up like this, because that's the pointing. Anyhow, that's, it says, uh, some of them call it the Finger Mountain. Well, you know, uh, Mount Moriah, that's the pointing. Verse 5, and the waters decrease continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountain seen. In this water... You know, the waters are the people in Revelation 17. And then we're going through the 10th month, and it says the tops. It says apparently meaning to shake the head. It's most easily shaken, whether literally or figuratively. In many applications of place, time, rank, uh, band, beginning, captain, chapter, chiefest, place. Man or things, company, end. Every man, excellent. First for front, the head or height. In the mountains, it's talking about a mountain or a range of hills. It means to loom up a mountain, hill, or mountain. And then going to verse 6, and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. He's opened. Open the sea. Loosen or begin. Plow or carve. Break forth. And it's got the F in front of it. The window. This is a perforated. Of the ark. What does the word ark mean? This is a box. Which he had made. Verse 7. And he sent forth a raven. This is a raven from its dusky hue. Through the idea of covering with a texture to grow dusky at sundown, be darkened towards evening. Which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Verse 8, and he sent forth a dove. A dove. Apparently from the warmth of their mating. Uh, it says effervescence, a wine as fermented. Banqueting from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. In verse 9, But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him with 
into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. Verse 11, And the dove came in to him in the evening, in the evening, evening tide, or at dusk, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Verse 12, And he stayed yet another seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. Verse 13, And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, this would be Abib, the first day, the waters were dried up off, from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day, the twenty-seventh day of the month, was the earth dried. This is going to be in the month of Ziph, or Iyar. It's in the second month. And then it's going to, God's going to speak to Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh. And then he's telling them to multiply. I'm not thinking we're going to be doing that in these end times because there's no giving and taking in marriage in the spiritual body. But anyway, we get an idea of that time frame. And going back up here to verse 14, here in the side task, it points out that Noah was in the ark a complete solar year, or 365 days. For he entered in on the 17th of the second month, in the 600th year of his life, and continued in it till the 27th day of the second month, in the 601st year of his life. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, so going back to the Strong's, you can see that the 10th has a lot of meaning all through here. Talking about uh, the 10th day of the 7th month. I'm just going to scroll this up so you can see them. Like I say, I pointed out a few that I thought were of interest to the study. Not that all of them aren't, but talking about 10th generations. Uh, here in 1 Samuel 8, verse 15 through 17, this is the chapter where the Israelites decided that they wanted a man king instead of having our Heavenly Father reside over the people so he's telling them this is what's going to happen you know with this man king he's going to take a tenth of your seed he will take a tenth of your sheep he's going to take your sons and daughters and all this kind of stuff that's going to befall them and this is what's happened and we're still in it today okay so then going to second kings 25 this is uh this is in year of his reign in the 10th month and then in the 10th day of the month, this is talking about that king of Babylon coming against the city of Jerusalem. And then we also see here, this is that in 1 Chronicles 24, we just read that. The 10th is Shekinah, is God dwells there. And then here, the 10th captain for the 10th month in 1 Chronicles 27. And then we also have reference to the 10th month to examine the matter. This is in Ezra 10. This is when those uh, they were told they could go back and build in the house of God. And then with some problems because there was a lot of mixing of the different tribes there with other people that were not of their tribes. And then we got the royal house in the 10th month. This is in Ezra 2. We've already read that one. Then we have Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th month in Jeremiah 32. The king of Judah in the 10th month, Jeremiah 39. Then year of his reign in the 10th month, Jeremiah 52. You see all of them right through here. 
And then the tenth day of the month, this is in as, uh, Ezekiel 20. And then in the ninth year, in the tenth month, Ezekiel 24. This is king of Babylon, Heavenly Father's servant, he's sinning. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, Ezekiel 29. And then in of our captivity in the tenth month, in Ezekiel 33. And then as we just kind of scroll down, we'll see, for it was about the 10th hour, this is in John 1, 39. And as we go further down, right here, the 10th part of the city fell. And this is in Revelation 11, verse 13. This is right before the, se the seventh trump sounds, which is the last trump, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ returns. And we'll just go take a look at that real quick. Popping over to E sword, right here is Revelation 11, verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. And as you can see here, there's some verses that tie back into that for reference. And But right here, this is the two witnesses of our Heavenly Father. Those two prophets, those two olive trees, amazing, olive, you know, what was the dove brought back an olive leaf to Noah. But anyway, as we can just come on down here, it says, in, uh, talking about that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. That's Jerusalem. There's no doubt where this is going to take place. Their dead bodies are going to lie in the, the street or the uh, arena for three days and a half. And they're not going to bury them. They're not going to take any chances that they disappear as they are trying to claim that Jesus disappeared from the grave. That was a lie. But after three and a half days, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they're going to come up hither, and they're going to send up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies are going to behold them. Uh, that's when our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, returns at the second advent. And these 7,000, I know that Pastor Murray says that this is those fallen angels that come with Satan when he's cast out in Revelation 12. But here's the seventh trump. This is the last trump. And you can find that more about it in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 53. And it tells you what body we will be in at this sounding of this trumpet. And here it is. Just give you a little bit more detail about it, about this seventh angel. You see another reference here in Revelation 10. But it's not showing 1 Corinthians 15. And we'll pop over there real quick. Uh, mystery and victory. Right here in verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that's the seventh, the furthest one out, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. That's all people, good and bad. Because this corruptible, this flesh body must put on spiritual body or that celestial body now here's mortal must put on immortality this is those that are liable to die the second death those are the ones that took the mark of the beast those with immortality everlasting life will be gathered to the lord at this last trump and will be forever with the lord well okay so i just wanted to point this out and we'll go back to the strongs and coming down to this tent, talking about a chrysoparosis. I'm not sure how you pronounce that here in Revelation 21 20. But this is in reference when I kind of checked it out. This word, it goes back to gold, G O L D, and it also has a reference to like a stone. So it's either like gold. It's something golden, maybe a stone with gold on it, or anyway, it's, it refers back to gold. 
And I think about that refining that our Heavenly Father says, you know, where you have the the drags, you know, removing the drags from the pure gold as in a fire. So that's what I'm kind of thinking that this is a reference to. Okay, and so I guess I will end this video study. If I have time, I will try to go back and, and do more of a in-depth study on some of these that are in reference to the 10th month. But if I don't, please, you know, by all means, go read these. Go read these that are in direct reference to the 10th month because it's very important. Our Heavenly Father didn't give us these examples for us not to learn something from them. And I know that at times I you know give you my opinion just take that for what it is but always study our father's word and always make make sure that you're reading and you're discerning his word don't take my word for it but read our father's word anyhow god bless everyone and let us be watchful